Now, the big problem with Sri Lanka is that the government at this point of time is entirely controlled by one family. This is the Rajapaksas. The president is Gotabaya Rajapakse. The prime minister is his elder brother, the former president Mahinda Rajapakse. The finance minister is the third brother, Basil Rohana Rajapakse. And the eldest of the Rajapakse siblings is Chawal Rajapakse, the country's home minister at this point of time. The list, of course, does not end here. There is Namal Rajapakse, who is the minister of youth and sports. He is the prime minister's son. And there is Yushita Rajapakse, who is the prime minister's chief of staff. Shashindra Rajapakse, Sri Lanka's Minister of Agriculture. Shamindra Rajapakse, the Director of Sri Lankan Airlines. All in all, the Rajapakse family at this point of time holds nine crucial ministerial berths in the central cabinet. This includes seven top cabinet posts in the Sri Lankan government and currently they control 75% of all of Sri Lanka's budget. And this, of course, is the same Sri Lanka where there are no exam papers because the government has no money to purchase exam papers. Streets have gone dark because there is no electricity and there is not enough money to purchase diesel that are required to run the coal power plants. People are queuing up for fuel and power cuts have become the new normal. Now, this is the family, the Rajapakse family that is responsible squarely for Sri Lanka's doom. To understand their role, let's take you back some 15 years. The year was 2007. Mahinda Rajapakse, the strongman president, was in charge and he took a major policy decision. Colombo began borrowing money. Government bonds were sold in capital markets. 15 years later, that borrowing hasn't stopped. Today, these loans account for nearly about 38% of Sri Lanka's debt. The loans, of course, were not cheap. They came from China and this made the situation far worse. Mahindra Rajapakse was Sri Lanka's president from 2005 till 2015. And during this period, China was involved in 70% of all new infrastructure projects in Sri Lanka. It gave at least about $14 billion from 2005 to 2015. And according to some estimates, Sri Lanka owes China well over $10 billion. A large chunk of these loans were taken by the Rajapakse government. What added to the crisis was their very ill-timed policies. In 2019, President Gotabaya Rajapakse cut taxes. Sri Lanka's value-added tax was slashed by almost about half. The government began printing more money. And both of these policies, of course, backfired while the pandemic was further battered has further battered the economy, many believe that it is actually the policies of the Rajapaksas that has plunged Sri Lanka into its biggest economic crisis. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.